What's up, this is Pete Laskai and welcome to Raw Emotion, where I look at this week's Monday Night Raw and tell you a little bit about what I think and a lot about what I feel. First of all, let's talk about the bloodline versus the club feud. Honestly, maybe this is just Stockholm Syndrome setting in because they just keep giving us these matches. But I'm starting to be okay with it! Yeah, I like this feud a lot more than I thought I was going to like it. And, uh, you know... I think I'm okay with that. First ever Asylum match. First ever, they say. Hey, maybe it'll be pretty cool. We don't know. There's no way of knowing. I mean, we could ask TNA. They might know. But no, this does look actually really cool. It looks really fun. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, Dean Ambrose is looking cooler every day. I just, I like Dean Ambrose. I really do. And I know they're trying to sort of groom him into being the next Mick Foley and whatever. I think he's doing a lot to really maintain his own personal identity as a wrestler. And I think he's gonna be able to stay away pretty well from the whole copycat gimmick thing. I'm going straight from something I'm kind of excited about to something that makes me want to gouge out both my ears and eyes? Um, they gave us that same Bob Backlund and Darren Young bit again. Why? Why? Why is this? Why? 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 It's so dumb. It's so... Uh... They're trying to be funny with how Bob Backlund is out of touch, but the whole bit just seems out of touch and overdone and... Uh, in a backstage vignette, Steph called Shane the king of cheap pops. <laughs> I, I got a good giggle out of that, that's all. I was really excited to see a No Way Jose sign right behind the announce table. That's some good stuff. That dude just debuted recently and I actually got to see him wrestle at a NXT house show in Portland. He's so good. He's like if Fandango had like, you know, any charisma at all. He's really fun. He seems to really enjoy himself. I'm glad he got a sign on Raw right there where everyone could see it. That's good. As much as I hate and have made fun of uh, the whole Golden Truth uh, storyline, and I, I still think it's really, really, really freaking dumb. It did have me for just a second there with that video package, with that montage. I, that was not like emotionally investing, but I laughed. I did. I giggled a little bit at the montage. I... And then it, the match ended the way it did, and then it, I was reminded how much the storyline sucks. I'm also sad at how badly they're wasting Tyler Breeze. Tyler Breeze is wonderful. Book him right. New Day is just the best. Can we all just uh, admit that the New Day is just 100% the best, and I hope they never ever go away. The New Day Lorian. I love puns, I'm sorry, you know this, I love puns. <laughs> when they accidentally end up in 2009 and Kofi comes out with his Jamaican accent and yeah, they're so self-aware and it's so good. Speaking of the tag team division, um, I think, and stay with me here, that Enzo's injury might actually be a good thing for Cass. See, because this way he's getting that push that they were gonna give to them as a team, he's getting it as an individual wrestler, and he's the one that needed it, because Enzo will always be over. You can put him on his own, you can put him on a tag team, he is over, period. He will always get that pop, every single time. But Cass, not as strong of a character, doesn't always get the right crowd reaction that he wants. So, you push him as a solo act, for the moment, and he starts to look a lot better. Last but not least, talk about the contract signing at the end of Raw, which by the way, having women uh, as the last thing, the women's division, as the last thing we see on an episode of Raw, you're actually going good places, WWE. I'm proud of you. Keep it up. I'm sure it's only a matter of time before you wildly disappoint us once again, but for now, you're looking good. Keep that up. No, he's not looking good as Ric Flair, though. He's looking more and more like a senile old man every single time we see him on screen or hear about him at an airport. <laughs> but let me tell you, I really enjoyed seeing Steph slap him. Steph got chance from that. She got chance. There was a pop. For Steph? Are we face-turning Steph now? I guess. Cool. And that's all the thoughts I'm going to share with you on this week's Raw Emotion. Obviously, it's not all the thoughts that I had. It's three hours of television. Obviously, there's more to be said. So if you got something that you want to talk about, about this week's Monday Night Raw, leave it in the comments. If you've got something that you want me to talk about next week, leave that in the comments. Make sure to give this video a like. Make sure to subscribe. There's going to be a button for that. We'll say it's going to be right there-ish. You can click that, you'll subscribe to Brother Mania Brother, and get more of these videos. Until then, I'm Pete Laskai, this has been Raw Emotion, and I think I just heard the bell. This match is over. See ya. And I think he's gonna be able to stay away from this, the whole cop- mm.